Good morning. Welcome to my history and development of traditional Chinese medicine um, oral presentation on Sun Si Miao. My name is Madeleine Guinan Serrier. Here he is, China's king of medicine, Sun Si Miao, highly revered in China. I hope that you can see this screen share that I'm making and doing for you. So Sun Si Miao was alive purportedly between 581 and 682 AD. He was a renowned Chinese medicine physician and author during the Sui and Tang dynasty. He is often referred to as China's king of medicine, and he is famous for writing the Chen Yin Yao Feng and Chen Jin Yi Feng, two publications together comprising 60 volumes, including 6,500 prescriptions. And he is the physician and scholar to have developed and published China's first medical encyclopedia. Pretty impressive. He actively contributed to the development and research of Chinese herbal medicine and advocated healthcare for women in gynecology and children in pediatrics. Sun Si Miao emphasized the importance of dietetics in health maintenance and disease prevention. He contributed to the concepts and practices of health preservation known as Yang Sheng. He refined folk recipes and formulas he contributed to the development of professional ethics and education of Chinese medicine physicians. And he advocated the importance of moral character, continual development of medical knowledge and skill. Overall, this man was of great renown. And this talk actually discusses Sun Si Miao's influence on contemporary Chinese medicine and the development of ethics, Chinese herbal medicine prescriptions, gynecology, pediatrics, sorry, dietetics, not pediatrics, self-cultivation practices, and the 13 goats points. So Sun Si Miao lived through three dynasties, and I apologize for my pronunciation throughout this talk today. The Northern Zhao dynasty, the Sui dynasty, and the Tong dynasty. He was a very dedicated student of Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. And he preferred to offer his services to the people of the general public rather than the imperial court. In fact, as we'll later see, he had very strong beliefs and moral values in relation to who um, and how he provided treatment to. The teacher, he was also renowned as a teacher of Song Ji Wen, Meng Shen and Lu Zhao Lin, all prominent scholars of the early Tong dynasty. So Sun Si Miao lived through a childhood fraught with fragile health, through war, poverty, disease epidemic and disease epidemics. And accordingly, because of his experiences, he decided to devote his life to the study and practice of medicine. At a very young age, he was renowned for his insightful, insightful grasp on philosophy, literature, cosmology, and religion. And he traveled very far and wide to acquire different information and practices on herbs and prescriptions, folk remedies, and an array of clinical practices. And it's from, it is from these travels that Simya modified and composed the 6,500 prescriptions contained in the Chan Yi, Chan Jin Yao Feng and Chan Jin Yi Feng. He was a representative of the scholar of meridians and acupuncture points accuracy school. And accordingly, he emphasized the accurate location and use of acupuncture points and meridians, and he discussed the importance of acupuncture manipulation, stimulation techniques, and obtaining the qi. In fact, his practices were very much steeped in precision. And um, this will be seen later on when we discuss um, continual professional education. Sun Si Miao believed that a good Chinese medicine physician was proficient not only in acupuncture in moxibustion and Chinese herbal medicine, but also dietetics and nurturing life practices 
and that the practice or prescription of one of these alone was insufficient. He really did believe that a practitioner of Chinese medicine to do their job well and to completely be in service to their patient must draw from all of these areas and sciences. His texts discussed the importance of topics such as pediatric and gynecological care, dietetics, cultivation practices, and external diseases. He really believed that medical physicians should treat all patients equally, regardless of their social and financial status in society, and that physicians should continue to immerse themselves in refining their knowledge throughout their career. So basically what we know today is continual professional development. He greatly contributed to the development and of Chinese medicine, medicine theory and his practices and philosophies have helped shape the notion of health and medicine as a way of life. So, <clears throat> Sun Si Miao and gynecological care. One of the most significant features of Sun Si Miao's encyclopedia was actually the important he accorded to gynecology. Earlier texts such as the Essentials of the Golden Coffer, On the Origins and Symptoms of of the various diseases and the Huangdi Neijing and the Nanjing and the Shanghanung all briefly addressed specific treatments of gynecology. However, the information was quite limited and there was little importance accorded to the special care for women. Um, Simiao actually advocated for the necessity for separate prescriptions and special care for women's minds and bodies. And this is because he emphasized that women were more difficult to treat than men. And the reason for this was their function in reproduction. Um, not only did Semyao dedicate a whole three scrolls to gynecology, his work eloquently advocated the necessity for those separate prescriptions in publishing these, Simya laid the foundation for the area of gynecology to become a recognized and esteemed area of specialty in research and medical training from the Song Dynasty onwards. So this laid the foundation for the development of gynecology as an established and esteemed medical specialty today. And before then, women were seen as, seen as an aside to men. And so this really was a groundbreaking um, principle for him to advocate at this time. It can also be said that Simiao significantly transformed the notion of Shang Yang, which is Yang Sheng, sorry, which are nurturing life practices. Um, Shang Yang, Yang Sheng is a Taoist philosophy concept of maintaining good health and vitality and longevity through certain practices such as meditation, breathing techniques, physical exercises, self cultivations, dietetics, um, alchemy, and sexual cultivation. Through, though this concept of Yang Sheng predates Simyao by far, and he did not come up with this concept. Um, it wasn't until his teachings and publications that these practices and philosophies um, were transformed beyond the practitioner and the patient. And that's to say that um, until, so Simyao believed that he, it was really important to treat the whole family line and in this way, he changed the role of the physician to simply, and even the role of Yang Sheng practices from being prescribed by the physician to the patient to actually um, take into account the whole family of the patient. So Simya believed that in order to improve health and prolong life, it was actually necessarily necessary to look at the physic, to look beyond the physical body, and also address the health and well-being 
of the whole family of the patient. And I think in this regard, cosmology and his study of cosmology and Taoism really came into play. Simiao is often credited as the first physician to reinterpret the concept of Yang Sheng beyond the physician and patient and taking on the whole family line. He read in this way and by doing this, he actually redefined the concept of life, we can say, to encompass a social, moral and cosmological context of one's existence. And accordingly, Simiao did not simply treat the individual, he endorsed treating the whole family line. This really re revolutionized the concept of healthcare and arguably elevated it to a and uh, elevated the practice of medicine to so a social and sociological platform. This altered the role of the physician ultimately, expanding it from a role solely responsible for prescribing um, for addressing specific symptoms in a patient and prescribing the appropriate health care to actually forging a role and possibility for what we call later in history scholar physicians. And these were physicians who chose medicine as a valued and venerable profession. So in contemporary China today, um, Chinese medicine practitioners are often expected to involve the family in the treatment of a patient. And I think this is perhaps seen a little bit more and more in the West, but it definitely is also I'm told, and so I have read um, something that is endorsed in China and in other Oriental countries. Um, so this cultural norm is, can be said to be a consequence of the school of thought expressed by Sun Tzu Miao, that to treat a patient we have to treat the family at large and consider the context that they are coming from. And now we'll see dietetics and lifestyle, lifestyle practices. So in his work, the Changjing Yao Shong or Yao Gong, Sim Yao dedicated an entire volume to the importance of dietetics in medical theory and healing. In there, he states that a good physician should seek first to treat with food and resort only to herbal medicines should the changes in the dietetics prescription not be adequate enough to produce a change in the patient. He even went so far as to say that a physician who did not abstain from prescribing medicinal prescriptions as their primary treatment was unsuccessful in eradicating disease. And as we'll see later on, he was quite a renowned Chinese herbalist. So for him to place an emphasis on food first really, really was quite significant and um, really has an impact on how we should consider the role of dietetics in contemporary Chinese medicine today. Um, he believes the, the, so with Sim Yao, the dietetics were prescribed with lifestyle recommendations and encompassing breathing and physical exercises, meditation techniques, um, fostering, he really encouraged fostering certain characteristics of the patients and emotional moderation. And so we're, again, here we can see the Taoist philosophies coming in of treating the person as a whole, really, really understanding that disease is not just a one off manifestation of the physical, but really looking at how one person lived and ate and believed in themselves and expressed themselves. Simyao's understanding and practice of medicine went far beyond acupuncture and moxibustion and herbal prescriptions, as we can see here. Um, and this is reflected in contemporary practice of Chinese medicine today, where we encompass many modules in education and in practice to encompass discussions with our patients on lifestyle changes and dietetics. Um, and I think this is being done more and more in the West as well. And, and it's a really, really encouraging thing to see because it's also influenced how Western medicine is being um, offered to 
to people because it is also starting to understand due to complementary medicine such as Chinese medicine how important food and diet and mental health is and exercise. Um, Simyal claimed that people in practice of medicine required a thorough understanding of medical theory, excellent and diverse medical knowledge and skills together with high standards and virtue. He was definitely not taking the practice of medicine lightly nor frivolously and really, really did believe that um, practitioners should act in their patient's best interest with disregard to monetary and personal benefit while offering the services with the utmost compassion and empathy. So really for Simyao, the practice of medicine and Chinese medicine wasn't simply a service of the intellect and providing solutions to the disharmony and imbalance and ill health. It really was almost, we could say, um, a spiritual and personable service. It was a, it was a calling, it was a service, it wasn't just a job. Um, similar to the Hippocratic Oath and modern standards of medical practice, he asserted that Chinese medicine in their daily practice, Chinese medicine physicians in their daily practice um, should have an attitude of self-possession and concentration and appear dignified. They should have lived a pure life, alleviating the suffering of others and avoiding indulgences in luxuries and criticizing fellow physicians and that all patients should be treated equally. So these vital elements of practice have been integrated in modern standards of, um, of Chinese medicine today and acupuncture curriculums globally. Additionally, in countries such as America and Australia, or I should say the United States and Australia, Chinese medicine practitioners are required to participate in annual continual professional development to renew their yearly registrations. And it's interesting because we can really see this in, um, in his belief that first and foremost, practitioners were required, practitioners required a proficiency and familiarity with major medical classics, theoretical treaties, various texts of acupuncture, moxibustion, and pulse diagnosis, the materia medica, and other herbal prescription. Um, texts. He believed, Samya believed, that practitioners were not, if they were not widely or broadly read on the ancient and contemporary texts of his times, they did not, and if they did not continue to study tirelessly throughout their careers with diligence, that they would be reckless in the practice of medicine. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this way, Simyao warned against medical negligence arising from intellectual laziness. And he really, really advocated <coughs> the importance of continually learning, continually resorting to different sources to continue to evolve in the services provided. <coughs> Simyao's practices and knowledge also included shamanic exorcism practices. And this is likely to have been born from his interest of certain philosophies at the time. In the Changjin Yifong, Simyao introduced the 13 ghost points and for the treatment of emotional and traumatic psychological disturbances. The ghost points prescribed by, as prescribed by Simyao, um, was an alchem alchemical ritualistic treatment for emotional trauma. And he believed that certain life events hooked into a person, altering their behavior. And similarly, in contemporary Chinese medicine today, 
we recognize that traumatic events affects, affect individuals, individuals differently. There is a growing body of evidence now supporting that acupuncture as an effective, is an effective treatment for the relief of trauma symptoms and emotional conditions with studies demonstrating that ghost points such as GV23 and pericardium 7 are successful in alleviating symptoms of depression. So, so as far back as Sun Sim Yao lived, there was already an acknowledgement of how um, trauma and emotional disturbance affected the body and that this could be treated. And this is, these 13 ghost points are still practiced in contemporary clinics today. <clears throat> in conclusion, we can see that Simya was a renowned practitioner for his time for a reason. And that is because he was holistic and all inclusive of the services that he provided. Through his work and practice of Chinese medicine, which was thorough and included all the sciences, Sun Simiao established legendary status as China's king of medicine, a title that is not lightly given. Though he lived thousands of years ago, his le legacy remains and lives on. His holistic approach to the practice of Chinese medicine through the incorporation of dietetics, Yang Sheng, Shang, yeah, Yang Sheng, together with his proficiency and knowledge of acupuncture, moxibustion, and Chinese herbal medicine, and his notion of ethics and continual development, and the importance accorded to gynecology and pediatrics and external diseases, sets him aside as a remarkably exceptional physician and scholar. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.